How is it going young and curious folks? Every day without realizing it, we consume hundreds of products. And while some are obvious about how they were made, others have a very curious process behind them. And although many people don't stop to think about the complex process, behind the bread they eat or the sugar they add to the recipe, other curious people like Mr. Curiosity need the answers to everything. For this and much more, these are 10 things you consume every day and you didn't know how they're made. One, Oreos. The sandwich type cookies are by far one of the most addictive foods that exist in the world. The chocolate tops and cream filling make it irresistible for anyone. To start with the production of the classic Oreo style cookies, we have to know that there will be sugar, a lot of sugar. For the chocolate parts, we begin by combining large quantities of sugar with two different kinds of cocoa. Then they are added salt, oil, flour, and other ingredients to shape and texture the dark dough. Next, this dough will be passed through a machine that will press against the characteristic molds. And we get our chocolate lids, which will be cooked and wait for the cream. From another sector of the factory comes a vanilla-based cream, which is going to be placed on top of one of the lids and then the other one will be placed on top, forming the sandwich cookie. These will be packaged and ready for consumption. Two, toothbrushes. Every day when you wake up and before going to sleep, you brush your teeth, or at least you should, but did you know how toothbrushes are made? As it couldn't be other way, around the year 1600, our friends from China were going to invent the first toothbrush. And yes, obviously they were not like the current ones, at first, wooden sticks and animal hairs were used, which would not taste very good. But well, let's continue with the present. To start creating the brushes, the factories receive tons of plastic in the form of small pellets, which will go through a melting machine and then end up in the molds we know. Once our handles have cooled down, they will move on to the next stage where they will receive a layer of melted rubber that will give us a better grip. Now, with the handle ready, they move on to the part where they receive their bristles. In this case, they are not made of animal products, but plastic material. A super advanced robot quickly places nylon bristles in each hole and secures them with a tiny wire inside, but they're not ready yet. Uh, no. If you brush now, your mouth would end a little bit hurt. Before that, they must be polished by curious discs that give them a smooth finish so that brushing your teeth does not become a torture. Three, tequila. Nowadays, anywhere in the world, you ask for a bottle of tequila. This will come directly from Mexico as it cannot be produced anywhere else. The first thing we need to create this powerful drink is a large plantation of agave. Even with today's machines existing, the harvesting is usually done manually, where the workers, known as jimadores, will cut all the plant's leaves until they reach the so precious agave pineapple. Then a truck transports them all to the plant where they will continue with the process. As soon as they arrive, they will be cut into smaller pieces to make them more accessible. And these will go to an oven to be steam cooked for around 80 hours. This cooking is very important because it will transform the starch of the pineapple into sugar, something vital for the degree of alcohol that is needed. Then the pineapple pieces will be crushed and smashed by a large stone wheel to extract the maximum amount of juice possible. Juice that will go into huge tanks where yeast is added to produce the alcohol. And then it is distilled for a few days to finally obtain the so delicate and powerful tequila. Stay away from the tequila, Timmy. Four, sugar. Every time we have to sweeten a drink or we have to make a pastry recipe, we surely use sugar. But where does it come from and why is it so addictive? Everything starts with the vast sugar cane crops, which are typically located in tropical regions like the Caribbean. Once harvested, the canes will be transported to the factory where they will be placed on a large conveyor belt. At that moment, the canes will be crushed until they are simple remains that will be mixed with water. This is done so that the sucrose, the sweet substance within the cane, starts to be released. This sugary water is heated to high temperatures and filtered to remove any remaining dirt that could remain. Although as we know the sugar we consume is not liquid, we need to obtain it in crystal shape 
For this, the sugary liquid is then sent to a crystallizer to begin forming crystals. In this way, brown sugar is obtained, which then, depending on the type and color of sugar that is wanted, will be more or less processed. Five, sliced bread. When we have to have breakfast, one of the most chosen options are toasts, which if they are milk bread or loaf bread, much better. Although we all know that bread is a historical food that has followed the same basic recipes for millions of years. Surely you didn't know how sliced bread is made at an industrial level. The first thing you need is a good amount of flour, to which you will then add water, oil, sugar, salt, vinegar, and the much needed yeast. This last ingredient is super important for the dough to increase its size into a large extent. Once our mixer has made a large dough, this will go through some very curious cutters, which will distribute dough balls on a conveyor belt. Here it will get the shape of a bar and will be placed inside of the mold. For an hour, our bread bars will be strolling around the factory while the yeast makes its effect and the bread rises its shape, taking the form of the mold. When the bread is ready, it passes through ovens that cook it. And finally, before packaging, the loaf bread will be sliced by a set of very dangerous blades. Run for your life, loaf bread. Six, cheese. One of the most consumed foods around the world is cheese. This tasty and colorful product knew how to capture people's hearts to be used in almost every dish we know. Pizzas, pastas, burgers, everything is better with a bit of cheese. And, as we already know, there are thousands of different types. One of the most popular is the Swiss cheese or Emmental, which became known for its curious holes. But did you know what is the process behind this delicious invention? The first thing we clearly need is a cow that, after grazing for a few hours, would be milked by a machine to obtain its precious liquid. Now, once the factory receives the liters of milk, these are placed in large containers and will start to be heated up. So later, they can receive substances like rennet and starter culture to begin coagulation, turning it into a more solid form. Once it is ready, the operator transfers the mixture to a different container where we'll make filtering and pressing for hours. They remove the remaining water, so in that way, transforming from simple milk into a large disc of white cheese. But no, it's not ready yet. They need an outer layer to protect them and keep them in shape. And this is going to be achieved by a salt water bath for a few hours. Then they are moved on to the whole stage, which are achieved by the starter culture bacteria, which will be added in the beginning of the process. And lastly, the cheeses are kept for a year under ideal conditions to harden and develop their delicious flavor. C8 Corcho. When there were no cans nor modern mechanisms, every bottle made could only be closed with a cork. And nowadays it is still used by delicate drinks like wine because this curious material works very well. But where does it come from? Even there are caps made of artificial cork. In general, they are made from natural origin and everything comes out from the oak barks. Trees that once planted need at least 60 years to start producing the desired cork. After all this time, a specialist will carefully remove the bark and it will be taken to a sector to rest for eight months in the open air. When it is ready, the product is sent to a warehouse where it will be cooked for an hour long to clean and further soften it. Then the barks are cut into small strips, then perforated by a machine to form our beloved cork stoppers. Ocho, Crichones. When we are younger, one of the tools we use to draw or paint are usually crayons. Maybe because they are visually appealing, easy to use, and pleasant to touch. But do you know how these are made? These colorful crayons are born from the mixture of certain substances, among which paraffin is the main one, which is a type of mineral wax that is often used because of its low cost. Once we have our wax, other non-toxic agents are added, which will give it its characteristic texture. And finally, before moving on to the next stage, the ink is added for its color. Once we have our liquid crayon, this will pass through a machine that will inject the hundreds of crayon-shaped molds. After a few minutes, the crayons are cold, dry, and removed from their molds by a machine. Finally, a little bit of glue is applied to the sides to attach the brand label, and they are ready to join crayons of other colors. To finish finally in our hands, Nueve Nori Seaweed. If you live in Japan or if you only like sushi a lot, 
You may have wondered about where does nori seaweed come from? One of the most important ingredients in sushi to give it shape. Everything starts with a process of seaweed germination out of water. Inside saltwater pools filled with marine spores, different nets will be placed that will serve for the formation of the seaweed. After a few days of growth, they are relocated to large offshore farms where they will continue growing for a minimum of three weeks. When seaweeds are ready, they are recollected and sent to another plant where they will continue with the process. The first thing to do is washing them to remove any salt excess and possible impurities. Then seaweed is crushed to form a type of dark substance. But as we know, this will not end up on our tables. We still have to turn it into sheets. Like paper, this substance is placed on sheets and begins to take shape. If we eat it now, we'd end up slightly intoxicated, hence the last stage before leaving the factory is to cook these sheets for at least a few minutes until they are ready. Tin? Pencils? Even with a lot of technology, people still use pencils to write or draw just like we used to do centuries ago. And yes, these are unique and there is nothing that could replace them. And I'm sure that someday while holding one, you must have wondered, how are they made? The first thing you need, obviously, is wood, but not just any kind. Since it has to be soft enough to be sharpened and hard enough to not break. Once we have our wooden boards, these are going to be cut by marking a channel where the lead will go. Then glue is applied, which is going to be responsible for keeping it in place and also protecting the sheet from any impact. And now the sheet is applied in the inside, which is usually composed by graphite and clay. To start taking some shape, another wooden board is placed, and this kind of sandwich faces some blades that will give life to our pencils. At this point, if these have any color detail or, for example, carry an eraser on the back, this is when they are placed. And finally, before packaging, the pencils are sharpened by sliding through a roller that files them to a point ready to start writing. Before I go, let me say hello to a few subscribers. First, a big, very big greeting to Jordan Acosta, then another hello to Javier Ilakish and a greeting to Santiago Gomez. I also send a greeting to Memes, another greeting for Lady Malky. And lastly, I send a big greeting to Jesus Duenas, another to Mariano Pozuelos, and the final one to the superstar Rodrigo Massa. Now, yes, leave your like, comment everything, really everything you want. Do not forget to share the channel and the video with your friends. So now, I send you kisses. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to not miss any new video from Mr. Curiosity. I am Mr. Curiosity.